scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Issues, career issues, health issues, demonic oppression. And um, it gives me a privilege as I talk to people every time because it's an opportunity to learn and see firsthand the practicality of God's word. I have families to comfort them over bereavement and at the same time you are celebrating the birth of someone new. Are we together now? You are watching how disobedience is punishing another and you are celebrating the joy of obedience. So you are in between um, experiencing the revelation and the reality of the word of God and seeing the grave consequences that comes when we define our own idea about life. I choose to submit to the ways of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So I've had a lot of issues and um, the Lord just gave me a release to really, really discuss it tonight. Please, I want everybody, open your eyes, your spirit. Everyone will be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There are two issues I want to start with. Really, I, I, I just um, felt like starting out um, you can call it the part A on a little note since um, Valentine is on <laughs> Monday or Tuesday Tuesday I just thought to start from that angle and then just to contribute something not necessarily out of pressure but I think that is useful. I'm a visionary leader by the grace of God. And it's important to respond to people according to seasons. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. And they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. There, there is, I have seen two evils that... I believe, if not corrected, will destroy a lot of people. Just as an introduction, that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling, but just to connect with it. There, there is a growing fear that I've seen, especially among ladies, not necessarily koinonia ladies. Um, as I talk with ladies, as I talk with women, I... I'm a bit concerned at the growing fear as it regards family life, most especially the fear of disappointment, the fear of expectations not coming to pass. And then on the other side of the pendulum, I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men, especially young men. Are we together now? So there is on one side fear, the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies. Fears ranging from the, the projections of late marriage, fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. 
I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that I've been able to see. You know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look, I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So, I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married. So much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me, please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing, but just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living, please pay attention. Living in the 21st century alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with circles of challenges like our generation. Just being alive alone is a challenge by default. Are we together now? This is very, very important. And that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts. Listen to me. Ideas. Redefinition of paradigms and strategies as regards living as regards family life not necessarily a veering off of God's standard but a redefinition of our approach are you getting what I'm saying now what you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s is that correct yeah so if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming, there will be big disasters in Christian homes, although born again, although tongue-talking, and many lives. We are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society. I have observed personally, now, and if there are, we, we have a number of children here, some very small, some maybe in their teenage. But I have observed with shock, most young people from within the ages of, let's say, 19 down to 13, that generation has been violently captured by the devil. That 19 to 13, I don't know what happened to that generation of young people, but there is a disaster. They are, they are outspoken spoken rebellion against the things of God is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the American church. Are we together? Yeah. You study children, most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that. They are outspoken rebellion against the life of God, the ways of God. They are really the technological generation. That, that teenage and if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas, there will be a very serious challenge. The average Christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting, because it has changed. Back in the olden days, the parents were the principal instructors of a child. But right now, the average child has many teachers. Are we together? The school teachers are just one. The parents are even the least. There are many other things. There's Facebook to teach. There's YouTube to teach. Are we together? Gone are the days where you can, you can off a television and say, sit down and read your book. You off a television, he switches it on on his device. Think about that. The advancement in technology is a double-edged sword. 
he's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others so i i really would want to talk to us um ladies let me start with you there are certain things sisters i love you and i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen i guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him write it down i've upgraded my curriculum on this you will you will be interested to hear the things i'm going to tell you now a thorough upgrade just four things i've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman I don't care whether the brother has a Bible on top of his head. If these four things are not in place, your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster. Ready? Number one. You have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not God-fearing. Don't be too fast. Allow me to properly define what I mean by God-fearing. Notice I didn't say born again. Because that thing has been abused in the 21st century. A born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand. That's not born again. God fearing. The primary reason why society is in decadence, listen to me, is because the men are not God fearing. The fear of the Lord is not believing in God. There are two different things. Faith in God and the fear of God are two different things. I can have faith in God and not fear God. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many faith-filled Christians who are not God-fearing. And listen, look at this. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. My life is governed by a reference. Listen. The Bible is my reference. Are we together now? My decisions are made with respect to this reference. So when you tell me you are a husband, what reference are you leading your life and your family with? So many people come to church, but there is no reference upon which their lives, their ideologies, and their decisions come from. So they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women. There are many women in the last two weeks, the number of married women have had to counsel and the pain that the average married woman, woman goes through in their home is unbearable. They laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret. And the sad thing is that most of the men are born again. Some are even bishops, priests, sincere people, deacons. What does it mean to be God-fearing? To be God-fearing, number one, means to have reverence, respect for God. Not just to believe in God, but to have reverence for God. Let's hurry up. Number two. To be God-fearing means to submit to the ways of God. Submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Write this one down. To submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Not some matters. You, so you don't mix the word of God and culture. In our place, this is how we do it. No. In our village, this is how it is done. This, this
this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men turn them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture based reference upon which their activities are carried out listen let me tell you something there is no man that is bad when they tell you a man is bad when a woman looks at her husband when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad there is, the concept of bad does not exist there is no man who is bad every man is like a video playing out his mindset it is the thinking, the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad. That is why an armed robber can carry the same body and in two years the armed robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad some of them old enough to be my parents and have discovered that intrinsically every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody a, i'm a man i've been a man all my life i'm not just being a man now so you have to listen to me i know exactly men are not bad people but there are concepts that have turned men into beasts are we together a god-fearing person the word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If wife come. If. Watch this. This is my wife. And I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is a television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says my husband. This TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now to be God fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness or at least I to say what does the word of God say about TV is the word of God says there should be no TV what happens to my will I fold my will to let the will of God prevail there is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God the problem is usually the will of the man and I look at her and say what part of your dowry didn't I pay you talk to me I will slap you forget that I'm a man of God I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? Hmm. And you know, men, we are very arrogant people. We can be entering hellfire and claim that it's AC. We are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there. And then we say, well, I, I did not exactly understand. The configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect. That's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard. That's why in most crusades, women are more. The men don't come. They would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle. But to come and be healed, they feel is an insult. I am a director of A and B and C. But tonight I pray that God will raise men who can submit. I love the song the worship team sang. Look, there is nothing as excellent as a man especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter. It doesn't matter how it stings my ego. Once the word of God contradicts my concept, I bend. I don't look for an explanation. No, sir. It is being God-fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife. You are angry, but what did the Bible say about wives? It said, treat them as unto weaker vessels. So when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man. You are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair. And say, hey, hey, now you are talking. You are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, induces in Christ loved us 
So when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well, I'm not against good dressing. I'm not against looking well. I'm not against all of these things. But if you force your, your wife to have to succumb to those things, the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her, she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is. The fear of the Lord. Thank you, my dear. Many men do not fear God. Principles of parenting. Do you know that there are families and there are cultures, for instance, that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her, she will know that this is not a stupid, it's not a sissy. I mean, it's, it's a show of masculinity. I senior you in age, in strength, in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is god and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth i'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and i'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from god what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane we must reach that altitude this night in the name of jesus christ yes. god fearing sisters i want you to burn this revelation the first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought hello say hi hello because some of you if we don't press you like this you know i've discovered in church that many people don't listen as you are talking like this they are looking at you they are even writing but their hearts are already made up no sir i'm saving you trouble you will thank me for it not everything that glitters is gold and don't let anyone pressure you whether parents or friend and say after all what is there he can take care of us what is your idea of care buy you things are we together a god-fearing man a man he doesn't have to be a pastor uh -uh. god-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor god-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours a man can pray eight hours and not be god-fearing I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. 
So you may be Igbo, you may be Hausa, you may be Yoruba, you may be Kaduna State, whatever, Northern and you may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. The issue of this is how we do it in our place. This is how it is in our place. Our fathers used to, our this used to happen. No, no, no. People do those kinds of nonsense things. Do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people? It's the reason why many marriages are not working. Parenting. So the man has his idea on how to raise children. He got it from his friends. He got it from bad people. Are we together now? Do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents? He just lived with them. It's one thing to live with me, but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me. That you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you. The Bible said train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books, bad magazines, rubbish films nonsense photos and pictures and by the time that child is 10 or 11 years somebody else is training him how does a train move they are connected the train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops, he says, if I catch you with cigarette, I will kill you by myself. I've told you. Smoking is very bad. Forget that I'm doing it. You are not training the child. Is God speaking to us? What I'm saying is a very serious thing. God fearing. Number two, ladies. The second thing that you must, in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship, for building, for correction. There are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband. There's no man that can call him and say, no, no, what you are doing is wrong. He can beat the wife and almost kill her. He's the God of himself. Never marry a man who does not have a pastor, a mentor, a spiritual authority, an elderly person. There must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person. Say amen. amen. Very powerful revelation I give you. There are many ladies who say, ah, ah you're in a relationship. I think you should see a pastor. Say, I will see a pastor for what? what? What should I see him for? That's how after he slaps you and you say, let's go and see a pastor. You say, for what? Listen, no matter how wrong a man and a woman is, if there is someone for them to listen, you are still safe. You are still safe. I've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples. I remember one couple, they fought in Kaduna. It was a brutal fight. Police had to come. Police for husband and wife. And, to, and, and they are Christians. The woman just took, she could not take it that day and she decided that, look, I will try my best. Whatever I would, I will have to attempt this man today. True story. And two of them, after the door settled, the police people told them, look, you are married people. Don't make a fool out of yourself. Go and you can, you know, know how to fix things up. Two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me. So they reported themselves and then they came for counseling. Do you know at the end of that counseling, simply because they were people who understood submission, at the end of it, the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her. Nice people. And as far as I know, things are working. It was a very minor issue and all of that. Sisters, Please hear me in the name of Jesus. The 21st century has changed things. Some of us, this is the dilemma that our fathers came in. They had been beating our mothers for many years. There are some of us, if there was an authority figure, the divorce would not have happened. There was no one. The man decides he's the God of the family. The day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath, everybody is in trouble. Sisters, the man must be able to show you clearly 
what authority figure is in his life. Do you know why? Let me tell you this. Emeka, come. Sweetheart, come. Assuming, stand here. Assuming this lady, Emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her. Do you know if she tells him and says, okay, whatever it is, this is an authority figure in my life and I would like you to see him. Do you know why the man will run away? Because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much. He wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side. Hello? Are we together? So he's hoping that by alienating himself, there are many brothers who claim to love you people. They come and drop you for koinonia and go away. And after the grace, they now come and pick you. That's dangerous. Naomi told Ruth, he said, um, um, Ruth told Naomi, he says, my God will be your God. Your people will be my people. Are we together? Because if I know this guy with this lady, tomorrow if I see her smiling at somebody, I have the right to ask a question and say, ah, I hope that guy is your brother. That smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing. So what is the issue? And if there is an issue, I will at least try to find out. It's alright if the issues are irreconcilable. But at least that there is some level. There is disorder in the body of Christ because everybody is doing anything. That's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves. Yet the brother can be leading worship. Yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of A and B and C. You will tell this one, I'll marry. Just be waiting. You will just let me just put things in place. While he's doing that, he's already printing um, traditional wedding card. How many ladies have been heartbroken? A brother that has told them he has even met their parents. While they are happy, the next thing they just see a wedding card. This is to notify you that the family of A and B is marrying C and D in in different places very careless and we make the church look stupid let me tell you there's order in the body of christ many people will hear what i'm saying and think no disorderliness will always empower satan disorderliness of any sort will always empower satan the bible says let all things be done decently and in order bless you bless you number three very quickly are you getting blessed so sisters the first thing you should look at in a man and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this begin to labor in the place of prayer labor generously in the place of prayer lord turn the heart of this man he must be god fearing i've married the deed has been done but lord you can still step in you are the god of the second chance step in i will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not god fearing bring a jeep bring a plane carry hamper for me that, that all that one is your cup of tea if you are not god fearing the first question i'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job are you right with god and you know that you will not just tell me yes i said that's all right let's go to the next question no 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 no. we stay there and press it right with god means what yeah right with god means what you don't just say i'm right with god are, are you a member of what i'm a member of living faith okay that's all right no no I can in five minutes through your words I can know you are just a church goer you don't fear God yeah. let's restore the fear of God so that our children will be raised you send children to school you have finished training your children in the fear of God they now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person is that not what happened to some of us growing you left good Christian families the day they were talking about pornographic movies you've never known anything like that and you say I don't know anything they say are you joking you have 14 years you've never watched this and they make you feel guilty for loving God and it's that guilt that drives you say no I have to educate my mind and look at what has happened to your life now you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone be determined to correct
correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the word. There are many ladies, if he's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what apostle said. He said, it's true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crashed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his ego and as you are passing, he says, Sister, I love you. So people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly passion please look at me let me tell you any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful write it down write it down and put my name under don't don't post anything and put my name but write it down for your consumption any man with no passion for his wife i give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful it's not if it's when do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80% of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives? Statistically confirmed. I told you it's not because they are bad. Passion. It is passion. Passion is more than physical stature and, and, what, and all of these things. Are we together now? Yeah. So, that's why I hate arranging marriage. I'm saying it again. You know it. I've told you. Arra marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say, here's the lady. It's okay. You can suggest, you can recommend and people can pray. But where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day ring is entering your hand. Hey, hey, hey. You are in big, 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 big trouble because the man is only marrying a wife, not a friend. It is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Any marriage where there is no passion, there must be unfaithfulness. It's not there will be. There must be unfaithfulness. A man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife. He will find an alternative. And what a generation with many alternatives. His secretary is there. If she's not there, the other one is there. 
if she's not around another devil is there somewhere in the hotel if she's not there a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere at every given point there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband there are certain women there are spirits that walk in them only married men if they see a young man no matter what you have it's not their business but once they see you you are married ah what a joy if you complain about your wife say ah what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this that's right he's starting he's starting that's exactly what the man wants to hear i'm very serious with what i'm sharing tonight passion when two people come you know to introduce themselves they just come you see sometimes they hold hands it's as if hey, hey, hey let's marry you i said oh god just calm down because these motions are not passion passion is not the the physical exertion you are all around the lady that's not passion sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality it's not passion passion is the depth of resolve is a resolve within you that through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment no need for another the bible puts it excellently many daughters have done well but thou excellest them a man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man it is true i know that you may not be the most beautiful lady let's tell the truth i've seen this lady i know she's beautiful but you are my wife you occupy a place that you alone can stay may god raise men who can speak like that not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married she just says honey must we stand outside let's go inside she, she has already known the man said no 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 i have to take fresh air what is all this vulnerability see let me tell you something let me tell you a big secret there are four sets of people if you are marrying you have to listen to this thing two times one if you are marrying a man of god we are exposed to people every day people means options are you hearing what i'm saying number two a high profile businessman number three a politician are you hearing what i'm saying now number four a lecturer anybody in the academia if you are married to any of these four people listen with both ears and add your spirit in it because he is exposed as i'm standing here preaching there are all kinds of pretty ladies you are not seeing me but i'm seeing you are we together Say amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. You say, what is going on here? Spiritual father? And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come. Let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting. And say, honestly, well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you know there's trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen. It is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look, 
very well this ask you why I say because I'm a Christian you are not lying so looking it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there I didn't see and no you saw you saw it's just that you have self control are we together You must have passion. You must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. I, and, and sisters too. I've not come to brothers yet. I'm talking about sisters. But it's a quality for brothers. Passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control are we together it is okay that i look at this lady and i'm attracted to her it's okay but self-control that's what they say in the multitude of many counsel there is safety some the moment you see a lady and she's fine day and then even if it's during a prayer session in the heat of prayer say please can you see me after after prayer Shaka -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba discipline <laughs> hallelujah the next moment that's your first time you are even new in the prayer they have not even confirmed you you are not a member of the prayer department you are just arriving that day you say sister honestly where where do your parents stay let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself you are a very indisciplined brother because you come into a place with structure and authority and you just come in and do anything you want to do and sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things discipline let people come and meet order in your life then they are forced to respect that order are we together now Jesus is helping us today. Somebody, somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying. It's very important. Are we together now? Passion. If you are married here, you must pray consistently, brothers, fathers, to keep having passion for your wife, not just your children. Because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married. And you can see and say, ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him. No, no. You can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me. Like, daddy, how are you? That daddy is, 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 just means I'm available. Gone are the days. You can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl and say, ah, ah, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly my daughter, but he's, he's, he's not fatherly my daughter at all. It's another dimension on his own. So that you are married. You know, sometimes many men deceive themselves they just think the moment you are married it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married no our society it should be like that but our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry a ring is just a jewelry for entertainment are you hearing what i'm saying now it's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship it's, it's entertainment so when you wear a ring and say, if they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. 
love and passion. And then the last key, ladies, I will dwell a bit here today. Never marry a man who is irresponsible. That's the last point. There must be a demonstration of responsibility. 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 Many brothers are irresponsible. Christian brothers inclusive. Irresponsible. Tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means... It means to be aware of the cost dimension of life. Taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life. I don't mean money. That anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh-uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes, you say, ah, uh -uh, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by 4 o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's 5 o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home. Just like mommy said, obedient child. Nobody goes out to get food again. Because he has been trained. Come home. In America from 12 years 12 years old in America you see children looking for something to do post office ah, there, there's no chair for us they always expect to be recipients not contributors it's not your fault that's why I'm helping you tonight many brothers are like that they are born again they love God but anything that discomforts them a little uh -uh, they don't want it it's irresponsibility that produces laziness laziness get up and do something you have a meeting for five o'clock it's raining heavily i say kai oh quarter to five please uh benga i can't make it for the meeting kai, i'm tired this rain the cold is too much that's a lazy man who will not feed his family you see that he will not feed his family because you say there's crisis in nigeria they can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die the Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting you see somebody from 1996 no job is the wife that works pays the children's school fees and the man is alive two hands two legs he gets up in the morning sits at the veranda of the house they are playing draft together with other colleagues irresponsible men who come they form a team and they just play where's your wife uh, you know she's a nurse she works in the hospital you know women she will come in the evening the woman will return there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing there are too many irresponsible people there are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church 
Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God but an irresponsible one. Responsibility. So you must look at it. Responsibility is not having a car. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is not having a house. That's not responsibility. That's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake. Responsibility is not having a car and a house. Please listen. I can have a car and a house by the privilege of access. It doesn't mean I'm responsible. So stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible. Eventually it's an index that will show responsibility. But responsibility is from the heart. The willingness to grow, to press. The willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life. Don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is walking on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life. Because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after koinonia, you send him a text. He said, please. Sorry I've delayed you, but the answer is no. Because you are not God-fearing. You don't submit to any authority and you don't want to. He may not know, but is he willing to now that he knows? Are we together now? Yeah. Number three, do you love me passionately? No. You passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming. You just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's alright. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give me. Thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man, nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing, God fearing, meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God, many ladies don't respect God, they respect themselves, they respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls. Even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say you are a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you are a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. 
you don't have a boyfriend, you are 20 years. Uh uh-uh. uh, you mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, She's a small girl, she's just growing old. Come to us, we, we, we are our legs. Are, you say, You are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now, or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God fearing. A woman who is not God fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for? Rainy days. What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex husband or ex boyfriend or ex? sugar son or ex whatever it is and call the person after many years a woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere how are you reporting her husband to the small boy and the small boy says, how will we do now he says, can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree just the, the way we used to meet before you are married the the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships even in her marital home i will say it oh my name is joshua selman the average lady still has affiliations i tell you this you know i'm not lying some of you as you are looking at me you know it's true although you may be married but you still call john and it's not just brotherly how are you is the family okay no john i need help you have to help me this is my husband you know he's a stupid man john I say, as it is always you you know we know ourselves I say no problem john can you do the transfer now praise God that's why they are not faithful that's why they are not desperate to change their husbands when they come for prayer meetings like this and they say if your husband is not doing well pray they are not praying they know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested so they rather just other people pray and you see the woman just praying just looking around because whatever happens there is a well you don't say concubine for a man do you somebody somewhere an affiliate who they are waiting for number two brothers what should you look at in a woman a woman who is submissive to the man at all times submissive to the man on the line at all times I don't have a problem with submission but when at all times convenient or not submission has never been a choice write it down that's your own part oh apostle you don't know how foolish my husband is don't worry I'm coming I've not finished for now just know your own role submit submission is a difficult thing listen ladies look at me let me tell you a big secret submission is a risk it's a risk you don't know the man too well no matter how long you have been going out submission is a risk when you marry you will discover many other things you never knew submission is by faith and it's a risk it's a risk you've not seen what the man can do when he has money you've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money you've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure you've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a ceo yet the bible says submit submission is a risk you need the holy spirit to do it that's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by god hallelujah you must submit to the man at all times when ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough that's not what the bible teaches the bible did not say submit to man enough men apostle is not he's not providing anything i'm the one bringing the money i'm the one paying the school fees i'm not stupid i know be word compliant you can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete 
There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him a hair. You are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship you should thank God all this rush I want to enter a relationship my blood is hot you will thank God now for this message because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster no guidance submit to the man at all times and it starts from the relationship it's not when you get married no it starts from the relationship I know submission is not foolishness but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well and because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If his deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If he's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. There are many people like counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now, I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets are, that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person will go and publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, look, I remember what you did to me. These are that. The 
because we don't keep quiet the bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise the bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice is that true sacrifice there may be times when god can give an instruction promise so that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment i don't teach irresponsibility but there are times god will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to london on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here now unhealthy comparison hospitality i don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just with the friend you eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say this bond serve it's not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in a home visitors who come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah, when we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming with rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then <laughs> ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your pot is your own your corner is your own your everything is your own your shoe is your own your water is your own your bible is your own your bedsheet is your own that's how everything will be your own even when you get married you will demarcate it husband this section of the house is for me this one is for you this one is for the children there are many people who cannot give they like taking but they cannot give me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira recharge card he said what will i do he's already rich that's he's the one that asked me out i didn't ask him all that those stupid nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives no sir sacrifice say sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial they feel cheap being sacrificial we have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice so they come to a guy and honestly speaking all this guy has is a small room and all of this but god is helping him and no 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 that attitude of sacrifice is not there i want tomorrow now now i want tomorrow now They say we should do this, this, and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before, he gave her 10,000. As if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with. And you want to swallow him only 2000 okay i'm grateful you are saying you are grateful but your body language for that remaining one month kai is being shameless it's not good training hallelujah you come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything yet just because he loves you you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his atm and control his destiny the only person permitted to occupy that position is jesus are we together yeah. there are many brothers suffering under the hands 
of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient. You don't eat tomorrow today. Are you getting blessed? Brothers, the last thing is now the physical factor. Are you seeing that is now I even brought the physical factor? It must be in that order. That's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at. She beautiful, is she all of these things. L listen, as I have known God more, truly let me tell you this, as I have known God more, and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have walked in this life, I found out that all these physical things they are important, but sincerely, let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart, they will fade like a leaf. They will fade and vanish like a leaf. I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Joss when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man. He used to be my principal and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important. But when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God, are we together now? Supersedes, what's the second one? Submission to the man supersedes whatever. You've heard me say it again. You just come and meet a lady. There are serious issues. Maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-Christians. You know what I mean? And she's the only Christian. She's saying, sorry, oh, this is the family you are going to. You didn't settle down to pray. You say, no problem. You are too fine for me to let you go. You are in trouble. My mother is a witch. It's okay. I love you like that. I, me, I'm telling you, she's a traditional. Pra I know. Don't, don't worry. There's koinonia. There's miracle service. And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of, uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. I can't have a child. That's a little what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. As if she didn't tell you. You see it. Please, spiritualize spiritualize your process of getting a wife don't be carnal don't sit with brothers and say have you looked at this one what do you what can you say it depends on who you are talking to if you are talking if you are talking to a brother who is not born again you are in trouble he will give you the counsel of a hitofel and after two years you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade say amen god fearing submissive at all times sacrificial hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible? If that's not possible, I would look for it. Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh-huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches, whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation 
over someone or something responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something number two quickly responsibility is an awareness of consequences an awareness of consequences that if you do this there is a consequence if you do not do this there is a consequence responsibility is an awareness of consequence I identified a few reasons here where people are why people are generally not responsible let me talk about them for a few minutes number one the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment the reason why many brothers many sisters but brothers especially may never get established is indecision there is a difference between a wish and a decision i want to eat rice that's a wish i want to eat rice but i will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it or i will go to the market to cook it that's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it there are many brothers wishing wishing through prayer wishing through reading books wishing through receiving prophecy wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service no wishing does not pro provide an answer indecision over being successful look at me god is speaking to people here i preached the first message i preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called come out of your father's house that message blessed people in no small way there are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young i'm, I'm young you know i am 20 i am 30 even 40 you say you are young are we together you must learn to take responsibility over your your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision you've never made a decision to rise up and be serious you've made a decision to marry you've made a decision to have children you've made a decision to fantasize but you've not made a decision to be diligent diligent and say no I'm tired of the way my life is Lord Jesus things have to change look let me tell you something there are brothers listening to me right now and some following online this night should be your night of decision many years ago I got I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person I it was a vow that I took with God are we together exactly 14 years ago in fact 15 years ago exactly 15 years ago I made that decision that I was going to be serious and be responsible the first book I bought was discovering your purpose by Dr. Mike Mudok, Dr. Miles Munro and I sat down when I read that book I cried I remember writing it I still have the book till today it was a vow that I wrote I will be a responsible man of God I will be a, a responsible father I will be a responsible husband I will be a responsible leader decisions how do I know you have taken a decision to be successful when you stop making excuses excuses the language of irresponsible men I would have done it but it's not my fault you too you understand no sir stop making excuses Nigeria is in recession that's why no men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men and that includes women too of course number two admit your mistakes that's how I know you have decided to succeed admit your mistakes admit it oh I was careless in this area I admit number three stop blaming other people for your problems many young nigerians like this we blame government we blame all kinds of things we blame demons we blame our father my father didn't train me well at my age look at it's now i'm entering 100 level it's not the best but now that you have entered take responsibility take responsibility there are too many people in anger 
blaming people they didn't pay my school fees the reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father okay I agree I sympathize with you but now that you are in Christ is God speaking to us tonight His teaching is becoming hot Koinonia is quiet I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal stop making excuses brother stop making excuses stop making excuses you are making the same excuse since you were 15 you are 31 now stop making excuses your father drove your mother when you were nine years now you are 20 you are 20 11 years ago get over it and move forward oh apostle i was raped when i was two years i'm sorry i feel very bad for you but the god of heaven has helped i i I, i'm I'm not i i know it's very bad and it's disheartening but get over it and move forward in fact we don't even have too much of that in africa it's down the west you find irresponsible people a 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him and they'll send a counselor 70 years he he abused you well how old were you i was five for 65 years you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver and now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard dad i know you're dead but this and that and that trouble stories all this drama and gimmicks oh no take responsibility stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years that's a wasted life indecision have you made a decision that you will succeed brothers look at me have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority don't say amen have you made a decision have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months madam shift one small boy somewhere is pushing your wife Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates. Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. When you make a decision to be successful, you will stop immediately. You stop being a small child. The concept of small child is not by age. The moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused. That's why people are free. 10 o'clock, you see them moving around. Drinking sugar cane on the road. Eating carrots on the road. Just moving around. And they say, ah, bros. I don't know. Say you are free. Are you, are you free? Say, yes. Where are you going? Man, I got one movie. There's one new computer game. That's a man who has not made a decision to be successful. Because when you make that decision, your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime. You will be too busy. You have to even receive grace from God to think about marriage. Many people are not purpose driven. By 9 o'clock, you've slept. You wake up by 6 because you are free. You still sleep back. Wake up by 12. You wake up, you are still free. You still sleep back. You spend from 4 to 5 making calls, disturbing visionary people. How are you? It's been a while. Say, sorry, I'm walking. Why are you treating me like this? Is it because I don't have money? Let's talk, Jerry. And the person is saying, I'm busy. And you call it pride. May you be too busy for your enemies to distract you. May you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping, talking nonsense. There are many of us, our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything. Because you are not working. You don't do anything. People will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house. Your your house is the meeting place. Everybody talks about their marriage. They talk about their children. They talk about everything. You are the recipient. No. Be too busy. Be too busy. Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. 
many brothers are too idle they are too idle call them in the night they are snoring call them in the morning they are snoring you're not going to make a great life that way look i will tell you the truth because i love you that's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees huh could not pay our school fees there are fathers today there are many people seated here it's not your parents that are paying your school fees and they are alive and they are doing well you come and meet them and say daddy i need school fees they say are you stupid what should i do he said i don't know what is happening in nigeria automatically what they are telling you is are you not a lady go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees do you know how i know many parents are irresponsible now let me say this and i say it with all honor to god for the privilege of being able to help people out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning. She's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, uh-uh, you are enjoying, you know. Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. 
I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me, listen to me, who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judges, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He said, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 Naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Kai, parents, we, need, we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around, you are seeing. It looks like they are healthy. They, 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 aside from the spirit in them, spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head, they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind of that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. They look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. From tomorrow, they are selling cakes now, selling balloons, selling letters, selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves, about to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them, their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys, no. Us, our own, we deal with a butcher kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband, the owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, Look, I'm fed up with your life, you'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them, taking care of themselves. I asked the lady, how have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring. I laughed. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities. Wasted relationships. I'd like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh -huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis. Many people go and collect loan from the bank. Instead of them to buy a simple car, they buy different kinds of cars, move around to prove a point. You are earning 20,000. You are buying a material of 50,000 and you wear it and everybody around you does not know. Let me show you how Satan cheats Africans. There are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? Of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waster. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful, we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working. And in an attempt to show that the world is working, the money that God gave the guy to help him, he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith. Faith is not foolishness. You are in 200 level, you are wearing a, 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 a weaver of, of 20,000. No. There are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your barber comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. 
Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying. You are flying away your destiny. Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially we men of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when anytime they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet, before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? suit hundred thousand there is a particular anko that this group where is it in the bible if you don't have money everybody should dress well just honor them will they deny that they are your parents must they dress in anko please hear what i'm saying oh if eat your size and grow gradually god will honor you honeymoon you want to travel out to where if you don't have the money explain to your wife Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigerians for January to November finishes in three days three days of hilarious living you buy hamper 14,000 per one you buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church no sir there are brothers here you have no business buying a laptop you don't have the money there are sisters you have no business buying certain materials if all you have is one trouser my brother iron it with dignity the God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you. Book for counseling. Book for counseling fast. 
and say, Apostle, I need help. I entered it. I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, no, 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 I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waste. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God. And there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, it will not become a giant oak tree in one day, but there's potentials for it. Are you together now? Yeah. There are people some of you admire. If you saw them 10, 20 years ago, you will not like them. But faith... I saw one man of God, when I saw his picture, it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist. You can use measuring tape and tie the waist. His wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be, respons to be responsible and you sit down. You are stingy, you are greedy, you are in a relationship, Valentine is coming, you are pretending like you don't know. Plan! You must do something on Tuesday. Plan! Plan! You have today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning. Plan! So that you don't take for granted and say, because some of those things are laziness. Please, we must balance it. Brothers, you must be serious. Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. 
no moving around i want everyone to stand just just stand still for a moment and i want you to think about your life in one minute especially for the brothers i want you to meditate upon your life in one minute what will your 10 years be from now what will your 20 years be at the rate you are going with your life at the rate of your mindset at the rate at which your understanding is what kind of results are you producing sister look at your life now and be sincere between you and the god of heaven the seeds you are sowing now what kind of harvest do you see in front of you now i want you to lift your voice before the god of heaven in the next two or three minutes cry he says my help comes from the lord cry 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 please i want you to cry to god i've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you i want you to cry before god in one minute lord i have seen a mindset i've seen a mindset that is destructive i need you to help me i'm a godly brother but i've seen that i've been irresponsible i have been lazy lazy about my relationship lazy about my life i've been giving flimsy excuses i take responsibility tonight are you praying i am a lady and i've allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me i ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere, please lift your voice and cry to the God of the Lord, I'm not being responsible as a father. Pray. You are connecting with us online. Pray. I'm not being responsible as a husband to my wife, to my children. I take responsibility tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, take away every spirit of in discipline laziness and wastage and irresponsibility let it live my life forever lift your voice and pray laziness mental laziness entitlement mentality waiting for father to do this for me waiting for mother to do this for me flimsy excuses are you praying Please pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life let them be scattered now i don't care how long any wrong friend wrong associate wrong whatever it is pray i break it now i break it now no negotiation i break it now Friends that give me wrong counsel, I destroy it now. Shaka para takata, shaka ta breka ta ni ba shiba na manaraba. I was not a thief until I joined certain people, and they made me to be a thief now. I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals. Break free from those relationships. Hallelujah. 
Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage, I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father. Financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything. Direction on how to go as a pastor. Direction on my marriage. Direction on a life partner. Direction. Let me add one more prayer point before the last one. You're going to say, Lord, walk in me and walk on me. Anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife, anything, don't pray for husband yet. Lord, whatever makes me a bad wife, whatever makes me a bad husband, whatever makes ladies run away from me, whatever makes men run away from me, I humble myself tonight and I ask that you take it from me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Lift your voice and pray. What is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we are done for this night. Listen carefully. We are going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow, if God grants us time during the workers' retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young Hallelujah. man, to, for a young man this to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it is hard. The of the Lord is there are no jobs. I pray Every right now. Society Every gets of employment now, from the private sector. According to what the Lord is and showing the me, those in this room, right economy, now, there is no in the name of Jesus, I want you to shout the probability of Jesus right now. To one, two, go. Let it be shaken, oh God. Now, 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 Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a 
testimony of men that go to the fire. My life today is a testimony of how, it, of how God can help a man. Go, 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 cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is peace. There is advancement. Help me, O God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever present help. Ever present help. Ever present help. Outside, at the top of your voice, after the count of three, many of you will feel fire as if it's just poured on you. My God, let no spirit, let no spirit remain right now. One, two, three. All those that have come out Those in front here As a point of contact To those who are there By the blood I bring a separation I bring a separation By the blood now Now, 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 now. I bring a separation By the blood The mystery of the blood The mystery of the blood Bring the lady. Reshekete bakata gata bakata. Zeko pakata barianda susakata. Ara sheru zakarota hate. Hapekete bokoto payata ha. Pekete bokoto. Paria shakarota hapata. Iya ya. Ela bakos. Parota pekete pekete boya. Eye ye. Eye ye. Iga kora. Pekete boya. Bring her here. Patekebosha. Arosakata, Zekota Boba, Pompaniatosa, Arosia Katuka, 
Hallelujah. The God that we serve is not a dead God. The God that we serve is alive. He can change your life. The God that I serve is a living God. Bring the lady. Bring her. But the light shines in the darkness. Let her go now. You know my voice. She out. Sheila. Now leave her. Out. Sheila. Never return again. Sheila. Sheila. Now all the devils here. At the count of three, your exit comes. You hear my voice. I speak to you from the realm of the spirit. One, two, so go, 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 go. Out, 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 out. You must go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Be free. I set you free. Marital delay. Give me a hands. Oh, With a loud shout, out you go now. Lay your hands on this girl. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Out. I see you in the spirit. Go. Out of her. Now. Go now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Take over. Out. Posha. Come out now. Posha. In the name of Jesus Christ. The serpent and spirit. Your time is over. Go.
Listen, some of you are not out here, but there are things that are already parting ways with you. Are you getting my point? I want to rebuke delay. Many of you do not know the danger of delay. If you are not experiencing any delay, no problem. But I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God. Where is your sister? Bring her. Sister, where are you? Please come and stand here. Your breakthrough has come. Marital delay, it will die now at once. Hold my hands. Look at me. Just look at me. All right, then. You will leave her never ever to return to her again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I challenge you. Something will leave you right now. I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. Marital delay. Go! Never to return. Lay your hands on your stomach. They will never say you have a fibroid. I cause that spirit. It's a family thing. Hold her. This is a family thing. May they be free, O oh God. Bring salvation to this family right now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, the devil hates this prayer. Because if he can get you to experience delay, you will give up on your faith. There are many of you, there are levels you would have entered right now. Bring this lady. Yes, come with her. Just clear the way for them. Let me just touch her head. Well done, ushers. Let her be free. Let her go. Together with the delay. Listen, lift your hands, everybody. Outside, lift your hands. I'm about to challenge the spirit of delay. Sakataya Mandekara. You can't move forward because something is tying you down right now. In the name that is above every other name. Every delay in this place at the count of three, I command the devils be gone right now. One, two, three, go. 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 I cause delay. I cause delay. I cause delay. Every kind of delay. Every kind of delay. Where is the woman? I, where is the woman I spoke about? One mama that was here. How are you, madam? You, you came alone? Where are they? Come, come. Who are those that came with mommy? Bring this woman here. 
sorry, just take it easy so they don't. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Where's the daughter? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God is going to visit you. This is witchcraft. Eh? Madam, this is witchcraft. I'm not going to go into any long story, but I need to pray for you. You believe that? This is your daughter. Yes, sir. How are you, my dear? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. I'm seeing you tied. Kai, this is, this is acute witchcraft. Where are you from? From Edo. Edo State? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. And I always find my spirit in the village. Ah, uh -uh, now, hold on. Why are you? I want to, it's just that I didn't want to talk to you. See, let me tell you something. Huh? The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. Are you listening to me? I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine in your village. When you sleep in the night, they call your spirit. Is that true? Yes, sir. Just if I'm lying, just yes, say I'm sir. lying. Yes, sir. When you sleep, where do you see yourself? I when? find myself in the village. You find yourself in the village. Yes. This is what I'm seeing. They are invoking her spirit. This is what that that witch doctor tried to do to the spirit of Saul. You see that in the Bible. These people are necromancers. You will be free tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you? He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Madam, look at me. Can you shout? If I ask you to shout, can you shout? I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Can you do that? Go ahead. Let her go now. Let her go now. Out. An end comes. I command breakthrough. Let this family change. Don't cry. Can I pray for you? Father, let this lady experience breakthrough. This is part of it. Eh? Is you are the one that brought her. Celebrate this lady, please. You see why it's a blessing, madam. You feel pain at, used to feel pain at your back. Eh? You came here sick. Look at you came here sick now. Come and walk. Let me see where the sickness is now. Don't worry. Come up. Just come up. Check yourself. Check. Do what you couldn't do. Check whether the pain is there. Do what you couldn't do. Just do. Check. I was already healed. Yeah. You were what? I was already healed. You were already healed. They have been calling me to come for this program. I couldn't come. Even when I was in the shop, my daughter said, Mommy, come. I kept a seat for you. When you enter, the Holy Spirit said, That is the man that will deliver you. I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago. But there's battle. I always complain, why am I seeing my spirit in the village? And anything we touch with my husband, there's nothing. I went to, even when you are preaching, you say some people will go to some me church to go and receive miracle. I went to, the last one I went to, I weep. I gave money, I cooked to this woman. He says it's a prophet. You cook for the prophetess? Who cook? And after I left the place, after I left the place, he just damaged my image, or just said different things about me. And I'm not like that. And God did it for me today. I'm the king. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the one that brought her. Are you her daughter? No, she's my neighbor. She's your neighbor. What do you want God to do for you? I just want to get admission. That's all. Admission? Yes. Where? Into an university. Have you written jam? No, no. You are writing next week. Yes. Hold my hand. My God. In the name that is above all names. 
we give you admission in this place now the god who is bigger than any registrar bigger than any senate you will come back and stand right here and testify you have it in the name of jesus christ now no power will stop you i use this as a point of contact to everyone who is going to be writing jam whether for you or for your loved ones i tell you the truth and i lie not see listen prophecy every power that says you will not be admitted in the name that is above all name receive your admission receive your admission receive your admission receive your admission and provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost receive your admission well, listen whether you know what you are writing or not may my god hold your hands that hand that hold mene mene take you fess it if i be a servant of god may my god hold your hand listen many of you do not know the power of prophecy prophecy is not just about speaking it creates the scene for your breakthrough to happen Lekoto pradia saganda ria tagada baya, parada shi amakrodi siza ma varadi ata. Zego shila. Give me her hands. She was coming to fight me now. Shila. All right, you must. No, don't put it in. Hold on. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Out. You are a wicked spirit by the power of the blood. Go now. Don't waste our time here. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Be thou and throne on high and throne on high and throne. Let me worship us. Be thou and throne. We're going to visit the issue of marriage right now. Please, I want you to listen. I'm just flowing as the Holy Ghost is giving me grace. Sister, look at me. Just look at my eyes. You must release her right now. It's time for you to go. Out you go. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I set you free. Let it leave you now. 
Let it leave you now. Whether it's for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to stand and agree right now. I'm about to command that spirit that causes late marriage. Please take it very serious. This is a miracle service. Don't say it doesn't concern you. And all I want you to do is just to shout amen. All the spirits that come to molest you and molest your loved ones and cause them not to get married in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that name that is above every other name In the name that is above all names, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please get said, something mighty will happen in this place now. Every spirit that says there will not be marriage by the sword of Elohim, right now, as you shout, Jesus, they will depart from you now. One, two, go. Every marital delay. Go, 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 go. Let marriage, spirit, husband, out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you. May your life partner come into your life. I prophesy. I call forth your life partner. Supernatural marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lady has been healed of chest condition outside. Check yourself and run out here. Check. It looks like ulcer. You just feel something leave you. Please check and run quickly. Quickly. Come and let God seal your miracle. The Lord just minister to me. Please check, check. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick right now. Every infirmity bows to the name of Jesus. God has healed a lady. A lady. Is that the lady? Another one, come. Come, you've been healed. When God speaks to one, he speaks to many. Look at just one prophetic word. Give them the mic. Is it working? What happened to you? Just tell us quickly. Okay, I just felt a pain leave my chest. You felt something leave you. Yeah. Do what you couldn't do before. I felt pain in my chest. Completely. Hold my hands. Never returns. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go forever. Come, what happened to you now? I have been having this burning pain here. You've been having burning I pain. How long? For I've how long? I've been on drugs for over two weeks now. You've been on drugs? Yes. Uh -huh. Drugs is even, in, is even in my bag right now. The drugs is, go and bring yes. it. Talk to her. What happened? Please tell us. A sharp pain left me. A sharp pain right now just disappeared. Come on. Are you celebrating Jesus? Look at the drugs. These are the drugs you take. In the name that is above all names. Hold the drugs. Just hold it. Hold it. Look at me. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are perfecting her. She will not need these drugs again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself. God is healing more people with this kind of pain. If it's happening to you, come out right now. Come out. God is healing people. Ulcers. Ulcers are going right now. Okay, she's been healed. God bless you. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Talk to me. 
I've been having this pain of chest. Please make sure you don't tell lies. For the past two years now. For the I've past been, two years now. I've been two years. This chest pain. Chest pain. Yes, sir. Anytime okay. Anytime I try to breathe, it will hold. It will. When hold you try me. to breathe, it will hold it you. To hook me. Uh huh. Sometimes I'll be crying, praying. My mom said that it is over, but I've been going to hospital to collect drugs. But I told my mom I couldn't. I can't take any drugs again. But I believe that God will heal me one day, one time. What happened right now? When you said that we should check, and when you prayed, I felt that I felt that something is out of me, and now I'm healed. Breathe. Do breathe in deep. Any pain? No, Any sir. pain? No. Sir. Just keep breathing. The power of God is coming on you. Lord, let that be the end of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. All right. I've been having this chest pain for over two years and six months. Two years, six months. Six months. Yes. Pain. If I breathe in, it just pain. Okay, pain. breathe in now. Just... Breathe in right now. What happened to you right now? It's free. Complete pain. Hold my hands. Lord, it never returns to him again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this um, peptic ulcer since. Since 2006. Yes, and recently. Peptic ulcer. Yes. You are sure, confirmed. Yes. Okay. And last week, the thing started coming back again, and the pain was so severe. At times, it doesn't allow me to sleep at night. But as we we're outside and we shouted Jesus, I felt. You felt something. Yes. That so wicked said, thing that has sat there, he must pack his load and leave this night. I felt. Hold my hand. I use this as a point of contact to every area of your body. That whatever has not been planted by my God lives your life forever. If you have problem in your eyes, God is going to heal all kinds of eye problems right now. Lay your hands there, please. I want to pray. Lay your hands. Please believe. Thank you, Jesus. When I pray for you, check yourself. And if you see a miracle, run out here. Even if you see that it has started, please don't tell lies. We are not playing gimmicks here. Some of you think it's an eye problem. But it's a demonic thing. I'm about to command it to leave you. Thank you, Jesus. Even itching in the eyes will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I command. Eyes be healed. Be healed. Now, be healed. Be healed. Every blind eye open. Every blind eye open. Partial blindness be gone. In the name of Jesus, long sightedness, short sightedness, glaucoma, every eye condition be healed now. Please be checking yourselves. Check yourselves. God is doing miracles now. Check yourself. If you have any growth in your body, please check yourself. As you see God touching you, come out. You, I tell you, God is healing people. If there is any growth, in any part of your body what's wrong with him eye problem bring him god is healing people look at look at a miracle look at a big miracle look at look at this look at this look at what is happening to these people look at eyes are opening come on give jesus praise eyes are opening receive your miracle receive your miracle every kind of eye condition Hallelujah. We we'll take the testimony. Check yourself. Don't let the devil stop you. What's his, what's the problem with him? Look at this. He can't. Eh? Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. There's no time for that. What is wrong with him? This. I can see. Completely. Yes. Who brought him here? His mom. We came together. With him. Mama. Okay, I'm going to pray for him. As I pray for him, keep testing him. When he can see you, just try him out. The Lord will heal him. Lay your hands on your. No, no. Let, let him lay his hands on you. Lay your hands by yourself on your eyes. I command new eyes by the power of the Christ. How long has this been? Does she speak English? One year, two months. One year, two months. Yeah. What happened to him? 
uh, it was glaucoma. It's glaucoma. So we went to the hospital and the doctor told me that he couldn't cure me, that he go meet any man of God to heal me. That he cannot help you. Yeah, so I'm from Zankwa in Zankwa, local government. So I had you, this You came program. all the way from Zankwa? Yes, sir. Oh my God. Jesus healed his eyes. Glaucoma, I command you to be gone. Bow to the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of Jesus. I command his eyes to open right now. Open right now. Please check him. Test him. See, test him. Test him. Just test him if you've seen anything. Can you say, don't be afraid. This is a factory. Just test him. Sister, stand up. What is it? Eh? You saw light. What are you seeing? Oh my God. Look at how this guy's eyes is so damaged. Huh? Can you see anything? I can't see. Look the at the only thing I saw was the light I saw and it went. You saw off. light? Yeah, when you just finished praying. So I just opened my eye, then it went off again. Okay, just keep looking at me. Please don't give up. Alright? Get him a seat. Just keep looking at me. What happened to you? I saw a sharp light in my eye. You saw a sharp light. You see the same light again. Yes, a sharp light. You've been using glasses. I've been using glasses over two and a Who half knows years her? Now. Who knows her? Ah, okay, you all know. Who is your roommate? Roommate, where are you? Come now. Roommate, when we say roommate, where are you? You come out. You know her? So that you don't come out. You see, you know why we are doing this? Because of the stupidity around the body of Christ. Some people now can think that this is stage managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we are calling the roommate. Do you know me? Eh? No, what I mean is, do I have a personal relationship with you? What happened now? Tell us the truth. I saw a sharp light in you my eyes. A sharp and I, light. I, I fell down. And then you fell under yes. the anointing. For, for two and a half years, I can't concentrate for long. I can't read for more than one hour. Tears will just start falling off my eyes. Each until is, you use glasses. Yes, until Give I us use something glasses. to read. Something tiny. Bible. Where are those small, small Bibles? Read Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. I'm holding your glasses. Arise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, give Jesus praise. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Who brought this boy? Okay. Father, How are you? Father. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Let's hear the boy. Who brought him? I come alone. Alone? Yes, okay. Sir. He's old enough to respond now for himself. Is that true? Okay. What happened to you? As Please was, make sure we verify this. As I was praying from outside. Okay. Something entered me. So as, as I fell down and I'm coming. Now I, I, I can't feel anything again. You then later, somebody hold me. Before I know, something started began working on my stomach. Something started working in your stomach. Yes, How sir. do you feel now? Was he blind? What was wrong? I Please feel check. better. You feel better. Yes, you were sir. sick. What was wrong with you? I was having stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yes, sir. Lay your hands. It must be perfected right now. Lay, hold me with one hand. You will see something moving and that will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Who brought this small boy? I brought my son. You brought eh? I brought my you son. You brought yourself. Ha! Could you speak English when you were his age? What's your name? My name is Victor. Your name is what? Victor. Victor. You mean they allow little children to come on their own like this? He's, he lives around or he took transport? No, I came with my parents. Oh, you came with your parents? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Mm. What was wrong with you? My eyes was itching me. Your eyes used to itch you? Yes. And then what happened? But now I can't feel it again. You can't feel it again? To the shame of the devil. <laughs> Father, let this be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Who else? Who else? Please. Only eye conditions. Okay. First God. 
I had this itchy eyes and it's always bringing out tears. The doctor recommended glasses, but I didn't go back to the doctor because okay. I didn't want to use them. But there, something hit my stomach and my eyes. Where? When I was standing over when there. When you were standing there, who saw her? Is that true? Okay. Yes, sir. So I and it's gone yes praise the lord to the shame of the devil in the name of the lord jesus christ it is perfected never to return again from the beginning of this month i've been having this i don't know every time i read i skip the word or i just go blank i don't know why and it started from january you what i skip the word like when i start reading i just skip the word or i just go blank i don't know what happens to me what and today like yeah or something? today i was in class and my i was, we were reading my friend was not asking me what's wrong with me i'm reading the word i'm mixing the word i'm like it started since this year and she's like okay i need glasses i'm like i don't need glasses oh when you are reading yes the, you will be skipping yes, the I'll, words I'll, skip the word, I'll go blank and i don't know why what happened to you now when we we're praying i laid my hands on my and my hands on my eye and then a light just just hit me and my hands touched Light again. You see the light? My eyes got very hot. And then Your I eyes got open. hot. Yes. And you felt it open. open. To the shame of the devil, it will never come back again. Read Isaiah 51. Just verse 1 and 2. Let's and see. came to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hand, and to the whole of the Pit, whence ye are digged, look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone, and, and blessed, I blessed him, and, blessed him, and, I and increased him. him. God bless you. It never returns in Jesus' name. You too. Yeah. Come. Okay. It started 2011. Um, I was having a pain in my eyes and an itch. So it's, I feel like um, each time it comes, I feel heaviness in my eyes. You feel heaviness So when I eyes. went to Chica, they told me it's pterygium. That is it's mostly pterygium. That is, I'm not supposed to survive. It. That is some, it's prominent among um, old people. So and when I went, they prescribed some medications for me. I went, I went and got them. Right now? So but while the prayer was going on, I felt that heaviness was relieved from my eyes. It completely? Yeah. You feel any pain now? No. It's gone completely? Yeah may be perfected in the name of jesus christ i pray sweetheart how are you what's your name Mercy. we have brilliant children in koinonia thank you jesus for giving us smart children you came on your own my sister brought oh your sister brought you what was wrong with you my eyes took your me. eye used to eat you is he eating you now what happened when, when i was playing i put my eyes you played your hand on your eyes uh-huh I saw that the thing have gone. Completely. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may it never return. In Jesus' name. All right, the last person. Okay. Sir, so my eyes sometimes used to pain me. So, uh, me and my mother, we went to sick bay. They said that I needed classes. Okay. But since that day, my mother and I never went. So, sometimes I'll, my eyes would be itching me. I was okay. like... Start feeling sleepy, but now it has gone. But now it has gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. May it never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while the worship team just leads us in a powerful session of worship, I want you to line up all the sick people, especially if you came here from outside Zaria. Please, let's give you priority. Just come out quickly and then the rest join them. Please, you came with a sick person. Now is the time to he to, to, uh, to, for them to receive their healing. Very, very quickly. Please, we have a lot to do. Time is not on our side. Very quickly. Very quickly. Worship team, please help us. Hallelujah. Please bring them out quickly. Line them up very quickly, please. Help them. Protocol ushers, direct them. Please, let's save time inside and outside. If you are sick, whether you are outside Zaria or not, just come. Please, come out. Now is the time for you to be healed. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Those of us who are seated, begin to pray in tongues, please. My Don't be distracted. God is awesome. He can move that mountain of sickness will be moved right now. Whatever it is. Please keep coming quickly. Come and line, line yourselves. As you come, just be praying and say, Lord, this is it. 
I am parting with this sickness. From the rain. Say, my God, heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever He will reign. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. yourself begin to check yourself let's pace them very quickly hallelujah as i pray for you please i want you to believe i already sense the healing anointing very strong on my hands and as i pray for you you'll be healed you'll be delivered no matter what it is please don't go back the same you don't have to go back the same you do not have to go back the same no matter what the issue is i want you to know that you are parting with this sickness right now thank you jesus Lord, I give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ.
him. He has what? What's the wait? Hold on. What's the issue? Yes, with my bike. And the leg broke. Wait! You don't try to lift him. This guy had an accident. Look at me. Since when? I think a week ago now. You can't walk. The the nurse bandaged my leg. Then what happened? I started. I couldn't walk very well again, so I removed the bandage. Why did you remove the bandage? Because pulse was going out. Pulse was going out of the leg. Yes. Where is it? Ah, goodness. Look at this. Look at me, brother. Yes, sir. Look at me. He's paining you now. Look at me. Just stretch the leg. Look at me. It's a demon. This is not accident. Thank you, Jesus. Look at everybody is seeing it. I'm happy you're seeing it. Show them, please. Put it on the screen. Now let this leg be healed right now. Right now. In the name of the Christ. Can you see the guy has suddenly become relaxed? This is somebody that could not sit down. Something affected the bone in the accident. I joined this bone back. Now. Who is a witness that he really had the accident? Who knows? You saw him limping when he came. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something is happening to you. Thank you, Jesus. I fix this leg right now. Within days, this thing will dry up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Walk. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Do what you couldn't do. Just do what you couldn't do. Don't, don't, just do what you couldn't do. See, he's surprised. He's shocked looking at his leg. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at this. Look at what, hold on. See, the guy, what is happening to you? The leg is drying up. The leg is drying up. Drying up. You are feeling it now. Yes. Everybody clear the way for him. Rush, go and come back. Walk, go and come back. Go down there and come back. Look at this guy could not walk. He had an accident with this leg. Come, walk as fast as you can. Walk as fast as you can. Look at the boys crying. Look at this. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. No man can do these things except God be with him. This is not for the glory of any man. Lord, we give you praise for that which you are doing in our midst. This leg dries up in the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the fire.
is. Injection. It spoiled the leg. Which of them? The right. You've never been able to use it. Mm, except with age. Except? It's an age. Try to move it. I can move it. Just where is which one? Which of them? Try to move it. Yeah? Just do what I'm telling you to do. Try to stamp it. Without this, eh? Not far. But can you walk without this? Shortly. Very short. Mm. Can you try? Right now? Sure. Do you think you can? Hold my hands. Let's try. Stand up. Look at me. If anybody supports you, if someone supports you, will you be able to walk? If nobody supports you, can you walk? You will fall. Yes. Okay, let's see. Try to walk. Come. Just 
Hold my hands. That devil of diabetes. It's time for you to leave now. Hypertension. You are a spirit. I command you out of her life and out of her family. Mommy, be healed now. Now. Take off everything you have put in her stomach and out you go now. Now! Did you bring your prayer requests? Please start passing them quickly. Look at me. God is healing you right now. The power of God is going through your hands. You're being healed right now. Pass your last, pass the request to the last person at the side. Outside, please do the same thing. Let's save time. Everything you have written on this request will be answered in the name of Jesus. Please pass it, pass it quickly. Totally free. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all. You are the joy of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. Quickly, you are quickly. the joy of the That's whole world. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Please ushers quickly, quickly, quickly. If you don't have your request, right? You are quickly. the joy of the whole world. attending to those outside those outside please let's have their request I hope there's a way of 
getting the ones on fa on Facebook and all of that. If we can't, we can just reach out to them by faith. Please make sure that you have a prayer request. God answers prayers, yeah. Please, everybody, rise if you can. Please, this is a very prophetic moment. Please, we'll start praying. The rest can come and join us. The other one. Pastor, please. Praise God. Listen, please understand that this is not a religion that is done every Miracle Sunday. This is done on instruction and this is biblical. The Bible says when Ezekiah was threatened, he took the threat letter before God on the altar and dropped it there. Are you getting my point? These requests have threatened the lives and the families of many of us. That's why we are bringing it before God and we are saying, Lord, if you do not step in, nothing can be done. But I want you to know that within the next five minutes or thereabout, as we begin to prophesy and lay hands on this, the angel of the Lord's presence will go to different families, different places and begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. So all you're going to do is just stretch your hands here and be praying in tongues while the worship team leads us in worship just keep worshiping as they pray in tongues is that okay please go ahead you do wonders in me Shekata ba 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 kataba. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come. My God, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Rekete baka prateke bela Stretch your hands, O God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, O God. Lord, Lord, let impossible miracles happen. We bring this before the altar. That which threatens the Christian experience of your people. My God, I pray that every request here be turned into testimonies. Let there be deliverances, O God. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Saraprake Jalima Zatala Broki Jilibana Zataya, Rika Lujari Krasatata Pata Shitaba. 
the God of all flesh, Shilia. Lizari Kapatasha, we declare Lazata Patasha, the one that parted the Red Sea, Rakapata Shitalaba, Ribizuri Branine Koto Shitalaba, do the impossible right now, do the impossible, do the impossible, do the impossible. You break upon the rings and you part it into two, do the impossible right now. Behold the request of your people, behold their heart desires, let there, let there be miracles now. Intervene now, intervene now, intervene now in the name of Jesus. We declare way where there seems to be no way right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, as a, as a result of an intervention, let there be influx of testimonies, testimonies, testimonies in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That which was impossible with men, oh God, will they will declare that with this request, oh God, let, the, let there be possibility right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles, miracles, open doors in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your great intervention. Thank you, mighty God, for the great turnaround. Bless the name forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. We command that these requests be turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Let there be mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please everyone stand. Everywhere. Please stand. I'm about to prophesy into our lives. Lay your hand on her chest. Out now. release her and go now hallelujah and he said to me prophesy and I prophesied as I was commanded not as I wanted I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound a rattling sound and bones began to be joined to bones and he said unto me son of man prophesy to the four winds and i prophesied O wind breathe upon the slain and the wind came and breathed upon the slain and there stood an exceeding great army i want to prophesy over your life I want you to shout amen at the top of your voice. Please believe it. Prophecy is creative. Hallelujah. Please play strings. Thank you father because you always hear me when I call Lord as I prophesy over your people let it not be a ritual I pray nothing will happen if your power does not make it happen therefore I pray that the angels that confirm the words of his messengers may they back this word and bring it to pass let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God. Hallelujah. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham. 
and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and the prophet said in Samaria by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow the Bible says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established he said believe in his prophets and you shall prosper by a prophet he brought them out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved he says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward Do the impossible Do the impossible I'm not singing Just concentrate My God Would you step in And do the impossible Do the impossible Change the unchangeable. Change the unchangeable. My God, step in to the impossible. To the impossible. Please lift your hands. In the name that is above all names. The name that causes demons to tremble. The name that causes breakthrough and deliverance. I command right now. Let there be supernatural restoration for everything that you have lost. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration. Everything you have lost for whatever reason it was lost. I command restoration of opportunities in the name of Jesus restoration of destiny help us restoration of the years that the canker worm has eaten now hallelujah every handwriting against your destiny that has said 2014 will be a year of frustration in the name that is above all names be cancelled now 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 In the book of Job, he says, In six things will he deliver you, yea, in seven things. And one of them is the scourging tongues of men. When men sit down and make enchantment in the name of the God that I serve, every cause, every pronouncement over your life. Because now, because now, because now, because now. For he has broken the gates of brass and he has cut the irons in sunder my God I pray 
every door that has been closed over your people in the name that is above all names if god be in this place i command those two leaf gates be open now be open now i prophesy be open now by the power of prophecy be open now everyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above every other name Satele kabande kreti zakat ashete tebala kata brege de balada baga de baga. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they brought Mephibosheth, a man who was not qualified, but the favor of God made him to sit at table with David. I pray by the favor of God, wherever you need favor for jobs. I prophesy receive it now receive it now from the north to the south to the east to the west I command jobs every man that has said over his dead body for you to move forward may his prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ I want to break that power that limits men every limitation every embargo that has been placed over your life that is said thus far have you come I speak from the heavens in the name of Jesus limitations be lifted now be lifted now be lifted now I command break records break records set new records do what has not been done I pray for everyone whose family member is overdue to be promoted the Bible says withhold not good from who him who is due when it is within your power to do so it is within their power to bring the promotion therefore i pray in the name that is above all names we enforce that promotion now we enforce it now everything that has died in your life hear ye the word of the lord come alive now Dead relationships come alive now. I pray for your academics. For he has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak the word in due season to him that is weary he said my tongue is the pen of the right the ready writer my heart has indicted a good matter yea i speak of excellent things daniel was made 10 times better he said i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say that when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say for in that very hour it will be the spirit of your father speaking i pray everyone called doll i change that testimony now everyone on probation we take you out of it now we take you out of it now everyone on probation we take you out of it now every missing script every injustice done to everyone i command the angel of the lord to go to every department every faculty let justice be done in the name of jesus
and everyone that has vowed that you will not graduate in the name that is above all names we graduate you right here we graduate you right here in the name of jesus christ we graduate you right here that cause of hardship that is upon our families they walk like elephants and eat like ants tonight in the name that is above all names let that cause of hardship be lifted let it be lifted i speak to every job here receive increase i speak to every business here grow i command you to grow i speak to every ministry expand and break levels in the name of jesus christ let the favor of god that can mark you and distinguish you among your peers i prophesy may that mantle of favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus christ may that favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus may that favor hit you where you are may that favor change you may it cause men to bless you hallelujah and i pray may the presence of god go with you everywhere you go everyone struggling with any habit here that is not of god pornography masturbation whatever it is it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ every dead spiritual life every dead prayer life every dead word study life in the name that is above all names come alive now receive the fire for prayer take it take it take it take it take it take it the fire for prayer take it the spirit of prayer and supplication take it let it come upon you like a tornado in the name of jesus grace to pray grace to study grace to understand hallelujah every hidden gift every hidden talent every ability that can bless you that has refused to arise i pray the bible says the gift of a man makes room i pray every hidden gift that the devil has buried i prophesy let it come alive and bless you now let it come alive and bless you now Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. When I cry. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time. Thank you for lifting. 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 Thank you for lifting my head. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, I'm tired of my life. 
I'm tired of living my life the way I want. I need to surrender my life to a God that is higher and greater than me. Some of you have probably given your heart to the Lord. Please listen. But tonight Jesus is calling. You may have a Christian name. That's not the same as salvation. You may even be a pastor. That's not the same as salvation. Tonight the Lord is calling many of you who have been living your lives your own way to relinquish that hold and surrender it completely. I'm going to make an altar call. Just one to five. I want you to run from outside, from inside. Please run like your life depends on it. You are saying, Lord, I am tired. Take it. Take it. It is yours and I'm giving it back to you. I am tired of living life my own way. I have done my best. I relinquish that whole one. Please rush quickly. Celebrate them as they come. Two. Uh -huh. Just come and as you stand here, just begin to pray. And say, Lord, take over. Take over. That's the song. God bless you. You are saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been living my life the way I want. But tonight, I'm in business with you. Four. Please don't let anybody stop you from coming. Don't let the devil say you are too far. Start running from there. Young and old. Join us. If you are coming, please keep running. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let your friend or your family members stop you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for all those coming. Thank you for that bold step. Don't let your friends stop you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how old, no matter how young, Jesus is calling you tonight. God is still speaking to you. You are saying, Jesus, take everything. Take over. I'm tired of living my life my own way. To you. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you for coming. Don't make this an emotional decision. Mean it from the depths of your heart. No matter what you have done wrong, no matter how you've lived your life, I want you to know that there is a fountain that flows from Emmanuel's veins. And that fountain flows to bless you. It flows to wash you. It flows to cleanse you. Lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is between you and the Lord Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you. Unable to help myself. I ask you to help me. Cleanse me. Wash me. With your precious blood. I truly repent of my sins. In the name of Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit from today. No backsliding. Some of you, as you are praying this, I tell you, the power of the devil will be broken. All of the chains. You're going to say, Satan, I denounce you right now. Take your hands and live my life. I declare that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. The Lord will use me to do mighty things for his glory. I cut away from wrong associations and everything that takes your place in my life. From today, I'm sold out and totally surrendered. Now keep your hands lifted. Father, bless these ones. You have brought them use them mightily let the power of sin be broken in their lives let the power of the grave be broken let the power of the flesh be broken anoint them and use them mightily oh god let this not be a, an emotional decision let this be a genuine decision in the name of jesus make mighty men out of them in the name of jesus christ congratulations i want you to look at me 
I congratulate you for this great decision. Everyone here made this decision at one point. Now I'd like you to just follow our ushers. There's a wonderful sister waving her hand. I want you to just follow them. They'll have, they'll give you some information and they'll meet with you tomorrow. God bless you. Please follow them. Follow them very quickly, please. All those worshiping with us for the first time, if this is your first time here at Koinonia, we love you. Please leave your seat and run out here quickly and let us pray and speak a word of blessing. God bless you. If this is your first time, wherever you are, just run and come. There is a special blessing for you. Don't wait for your neighbor. You are the first person. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you for coming. We celebrate you. We honor you. We thank you. Keep coming. Don't stop. We have a prayer for you and we have a blessing. And all those who took the pain to invite anybody here, may God invite all the blessings you need in your life. I'm very serious. I'm not just saying it. If anyone came here as a result of your invitation, I pray that my God will invite every good thing and every good person into your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We bless you. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy upon their lives, Koinonia. Bless them. We speak the blessings of the heavens upon your life. We bless you with the blessings of the house. We bless you with prosperity. We bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit. We bless you with wisdom and revelation and understanding. We bless you with grace. We bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May you experience the life of God in a new dimension. May God plant a hunger for spiritual things in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for coming. We love you. We're always here Fridays. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. Please, you follow the ushers. They will have your details. They will welcome you more on our behalf. And you will be back to your seat. God bless you. Thank you very much. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes. And keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.